Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about identity and access management, uh, which is a really important uh, module within AWS. We need to understand uh, IAM properly so that we can manage different users, groups, uh, their policies, permissions, and we can also define roles. Okay, so we'll go ahead and with demo, we'll understand all of this. Now I'm currently logged in uh, to my account and I'm logged in with the root user, which means the email ID which I used to create this account, I'm currently logged in with that. Now this user with which you go ahead and create your AWS account, you give your uh, email ID, you give your credit card and then you create the account. This particular user is called root, is called root user and root user is uh, having unrestricted access to do anything within the account. Hence, it is not a very good practice to go ahead and use it for your daily operations. So, first thing you should do is, once you have created your account, you should come to IAM and create further IAM users and give them the permission based on the requirement for that particular user. So, we'll go ahead to IAM first. I would also like to show you here at the top if I go to my security credentials. Um, for the root user, it is highly recommended that you go ahead and delete the root user's access key and secret key. So I've already deleted it. So that's good. You should also enable MFA. Uh, so AWS supports MFA via a Gemalto token, hardware token, or you can install Google Authenticator app on your uh, on your uh, Android or iOS phone, right? And this Google Authenticator app will generate the code every time you are trying to log in to the management console. So enable MFA, that is a good thing. Now we are there at Identity and Access Management. As you can see, there are currently no users. I'll go ahead and first of all create an IAM user. Press on add user, give it a name. Let's call it IAM test. Now, this user can have two types of access, right? There are uh, primarily three ways in which you interact with AWS. Now, one is using the UI method, right? As we are doing currently via management console, which is this one. In order to log into the management console, you need a username and password. So we need that. And in case we want this user to go ahead and do any programmatic access, which means access via CLI or by writing a program, uh, you know, with the help of Java.net, anything. In that case, it would be calling different AWS APIs. Then we can give it programmatic access as well. All right, and we'll say a custom password. I'm gonna type the password. Okay, and I don't want this user to change this. So go next. Now the next step is to give the permissions to this particular user. Currently, when you create a user, that user cannot do anything. So we go ahead and give him permission. We can uh, give add this user to a particular group and hence inherit all the permission from that particular group to this user. Or we can copy from another user. We can attach some of the existing policies. So what is a policy? A policy is nothing but collection of different permissions. So I'll show you a policy in a while. Uh, you can see that there are many policies which are available here. So this is how a policy looks like. If you see, this is uh, for direct connect read only access is there. So I'll go ahead and explain how to build a policy as well. So first of all, let us give something really simple. Let us search for read only.
This is the one which I'm searching. So this one basically gives read-only access to all the AWS services and resources. All these policies are pre-built and you see this orange symbol uh, near to that, which means these policies are pre-built. You can even go ahead and filter here and uh, you know find out customer managed policies which you are maintaining. Now I have not created anything, so it is not appearing. So I've selected this read-only, I go ahead and I'll say next. All right, and then we go ahead and we try to, we'll go ahead and say create this user. This user is uh, will get created and we will receive its access key and secret key. I'll just show this to you. We can even download it. So this access key and secret key, this user can use in case he wants to do CLI or API access. All right, now let us close this and go to the dashboard. We will copy this URL and we'll go ahead and try to log in with this particular URL into another browser. So I've just opened this URL into a completely new browser. The account name automatically comes here, as you can see. This is the name which I gave here, customized, so that comes here automatically, and I can go here and uh, go and write the username and the password. And try to log in. All right, so I'm able to log in using the newly created user I'm there in the Oregon region and uh, I can look at all this services here okay fine so I would be able to go and look at everything let me try and go to s3 and Okay, so I've logged into S3 uh, dashboard and I am there into hit website bucket. I'll be able to select this and let me try and delete this. Let's see if I'm able to do that action. I'll say yes. But I'll get the error. I'll not be able to do that because I'm not allowed to do this particular thing. I'm only allowed to see everything. Like for all the services, I can go and look at the look at the different services and its attributes but I cannot basically change or take any action as of now so let us go ahead and try to add permission for this and see whether we are how we'll be able to do this thing so I'm gonna remove this uh, we'll go back to the users again and this particular user uh, so there is this one particular policy which is added now I want to give permission to this particular user so that he can go ahead and delete objects from an S3 bucket. So I'll go ahead and say add inline policy and when we don't know to write on day one you can go ahead and use policy generator to generate the permissions or to generate the policy for you in an easy manner. Now I want to allow so there are uh, three main items within or three main sections within your within your uh, policy file right so you have effect i want to say that i want to allow on which service it is on s3 so we'll go ahead and choose s3 and within s3 which action do i want to allow i want to allow delete object so i'm gonna give delete object okay now uh, there is something called ar and amazon's resource name now i can go ahead and give delete object permission to all the buckets right and for that i can just put a star here or i may choose to give it only for one or two buckets in which case i can define the name of those buckets in the arn format here but for now i'm just gonna give to i'm just going to give to all you know to all the buckets i'm going to put star in case you want to uh, you know you want to learn how to write arn for a particular thing it's really simple we can take a look at it quickly okay so if you want to write an s3 bucket uh, it, it will be like this you write arn colon aws colon s3 and then there are three colons basically two spaces are left those two spaces normally for other resources it is used for region and then for the 12 digit account number but in case of s3 because s3 bucket name is unique you don't need to specify that and the region that's why it is left as such you don't you don't need to write anything and then after this colon you write your bucket name right so you can go ahead and put it this way for now i'm putting star and you just say add statement 
say next step and the policy is generated for you you can say si you can see SID which is just to identify it uniquely effect is allow action is s3 colon delete object so within s3 service delete object action which has been allowed and on all the resources will validate this and it says okay we'll apply this policy so after this one more policy is added and now when we go to this particular guy we should be able to go ahead and do the delete so we will try that Alright, so we'll try to delete this particular object. We'll say delete. Yes, we want to delete this. And you see the delete has been successful. So uh, in a nutshell, we use with the with the usage of permission, you can go ahead and define up to the finest level that which user would be able to do what. And as you have seen, there is allow and deny both. In case of a conflict, let's say for a particular user there are two policies added and one policy says allowed for a particular action and other policy says deny the result is always going to be deny understand that right so for something to be allowed it should be uh, you know undisputed allowed basically right if there's any any deny written for that particular user the deny will take the preference and user would not be allowed to do that particular thing okay so let us go ahead and look at other things. You have got groups. Groups is pretty simple. You can just create a group and you can put n number of users inside this group, right? And hence, uh, you, uh, whatever policies you attached at the group level, all such policies will be, uh, you know, will be propagated or will be given to the user which are there in that particular group. Now, you can have multiple users in a group. You can have one user into multiple groups as well okay but you cannot put one group inside another group so just remember that other than that is pretty simple just go ahead give a group name say next and then you can attach any policy you want let's say i'm gonna create to give admin policy i created this group and after that once the group is created you can go ahead and take actions and say add users to the group and you can attach or put any user who is available into this group right so this is really good so with this if you see because at the group level i've attached admin level permission now i should be able to go and do basically anything with this user so i can go ahead and even create a, a new bucket let's go here and try to create a bucket i'll try to say demo 0402033 right i'll just go ahead and create this bucket and ideally i should be able to do that yes and uh, the bucket is created as you can see here all right so uh, so whatever has been applied at the group level is propagated to the users inside this now quickly let us look at the policies as well now here are the policies if you press get started you will see a lot of policies which are pre-built you can go ahead and look at it understand what this policy is right for for which particular purpose this policy is written in case you want you can even go ahead and create your own policy now the reason why you will create a policy here is if you want to attach one policy to multiple users it's better you come and create it as a managed policy here and then you can attach it to n number of users groups or roles in case you you want to give a particular permission just to a particular user and do you don't want to reuse it then you create it as an inline policy as i showed you earlier in the demo right so you can go ahead and let's say create one thing i'll say i want to allow on amazon ec2 i want to give action a start and stop instances so let us go and okay it is start and stop instances great on um, anything so it will be basically able to do all also i want to allow amazon s3 i want to give a bucket policy list bucket etc okay on anything so i'll go ahead and give it the statement we'll say next the policy gets generated i can call it my policy and then just create and save this so my my custom policy is created now i can go ahead and reuse it with n number of 
entities. So I'll create another video to explain the roles. Please keep watching. Thank you. If you like it, go ahead, share and subscribe it.